In the previous Neo4j video, I introduced you to the amazing world of graphs using Neo4j. In today's video, I'll show you how you can explore data using Neo4j by building a small social media network and analyzing how different people interact with different social media accounts or websites. So without wasting any further time, let's kickstart the video. For this particular activity, you require Google Colab. So I'm currently using Google Colab. You can replicate this entire process on Jupyter Notebook on your local machine as well. And the other thing that you require is a Neo4j account. All of that is free. The first step in this entire process is the creation of a blank sandbox. So I've given you the link to the sandbox in the notebook itself. All you have to do is click on this particular link and you will be routed to Neo4j's website. You'll have to create an account if you don't already have one. And that's about it, right? So what I'll do is I'll click on this particular link. So here it says create a blank sandbox. So I'll say create. So it's launching a new sandbox. Given that I have a free account with me, uh, this entire sandbox will kind of expire in three days. So whatever you have to do, you can kind of do it in three days. Now the sandbox is up and running. So all you require now is the details of the sandbox. So if I go to connection details, I'll require username, password as well as bolt URL. So these are the three things that I require. So I'll quickly copy this to clipboard and I'll kind of come to the screen again to kind of fetch the username and password. So let's go to the Google Colab screen again. I'll be using an amazing library called as Pi2Neo. There are other libraries as well. But for this introductory video, I kind of thought of using Pi2Neo. So I'll quickly install Pi2Neo as well. The installation is done. I require some amount of imports. So which is where from Pi2Neo, I'll require graph, node and relationship. And I also require the pandas library for kind of visualizing the data in a tabular format. So I'll quickly run the cell. Now from this particular Python session, I have to kind of establish a connection to my Neo4j sandbox, which is where I'll use this piece of code. So I'll define a variable called as graph and I'll equate it to the graph instance object that I've imported from Pi2Neo. I will fill in the IP address that is the bolt IP address here, which is the first field. The username is Neo4j and I'll kind of quickly copy the password as well. So I'll paste the password as well and I'll quickly run the cell. Since there is no error that I see on the screen, that simply means that there is a successful connection that has been established between our Python script and Neo4j sandbox. So we can go forward now. Every graph database consists of nodes and connections. So the first thing that I'm doing right now is I'm creating social media platform nodes, which are basically social media nodes for Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, Snapchat, YouTube, etc. What all do I require for the creation? I'll require the node variable, which is something that I'll require from Pi2Neo. I'll give it a label that it is basically a social media node. I'll give it a title, which is Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, Snapchat and the others. And just to differentiate all the social media nodes, I'll give it the tagline of that particular social media. What I'll do quickly is I'll quickly run the cell. Now, whatever you're doing here, since I've created multiple nodes should actually be appearing in the Neo4j sandbox as well, right? So we'll quickly jump to the Neo4j sandbox. So I am in the Neo4j sandbox and I'll quickly click on open. This is the screen that you would see. So essentially you have to connect to the server first. So I'll quickly click on sandbox login and it will ask you for the credentials. I will quickly enter my details and we'll come back to the actual screen. Once you log in, this is the screen that you should all be able to see. What I'll do is I'll quickly run a small command called as match n return n. All whatever I've done previously should appear here. So I'll quickly run the cell. And it says that there are no records. 
strange, isn't it? We've just created some nodes, but it still says no records. Hang on for some time, you'll see the reason why this is happening. Let's go back to our Google Collab session again. Social media is nothing without users. So the next thing that I'll do is I'll create some user nodes. This set of selection is where I create user nodes based on friends, the TV series. These set of characters are part of CID, which is a very famous long running TV series in India. And these are some random values that I've picked up and I've created nodes for them. Every node has a label called as person. It has a characteristic called as name, date of birth, country and gender. So these are the values that are there in every node. And this corresponds to basically the user nodes or person nodes. So I'll quickly run the cell. Let's now go to our sandbox and see if these nodes are appearing there or not. Now let me run the command again. And it again says that no changes, no records. Is there something wrong that we are doing? Let's go back again and discover what's happening. So we've created the variables for the nodes, but we've not pushed it to our new 4 j sandbox. So the way we have to do that is what I'll show here. Now the way to push every node that I've created is using the command called as graph.create and I'll have to individually pass every node that I've created. So I'll quickly run this cell. Now, hopefully when I go back to the Neo4j sandbox, I'll be able to see the social media network nodes. So let me quickly go there. Now when I run this, I'm hoping I should be able to see some nodes. So quickly I'll run this. And here are the nodes. If I want to visualize the graphs, these are the seven nodes that are there representing every social media network that you can think of. So if I quickly maximize this, this is what we have. There are no connections at this point of time. There are no user nodes because I have not pushed the user nodes at this point of time. Let's go back to the screen and push some user nodes as well. Now I'll push user nodes. So I'll quickly run the cell. Now I'll run the same command again here in the sandbox. And I should now be able to see person node as well as social media node. So you have social media accounts and you have user nodes as well. All I have to do now is create linkages between them, which is what I'll do in the next step. So let's go back to the Python code again. In this piece of code, what I do is I create relationships between users and social media networks. So I call the graph.create function. I also call the relationship function. Here, what I do is I specify a relationship between person node as well as the social media nodes. So I say that Joey, which is a person, uses Snapchat. He's joined Snapchat in the year 2014 and he has an overall screen time of 47. And Joey has given Snapchat a rating of 3. This particular relationship is what I extend for all the user social media connections. And I create connections between them using this piece of code. So nothing fancy. All I've done is I've kind of made relationships between person node as well as my social media nodes. So I'll quickly run this cell. All I'll do right now is I'll go back to the sandbox screen again and I'll show you if the connections exist or not. So now when I execute this command, all the connections have been established. So Rachel Green uses Facebook, Monica Geller uses WhatsApp and so on and so forth. So all the connections between nodes have been established. So People nodes are directly interacting with social media nodes and there is a users connection between them. If this idea is clear, now let's understand how you can do data analysis using Neo4j's database and connect that with Python. In order to achieve this, we'll require cipher queries. I'll create an entire video on cipher queries soon. But for now, what I'll do is I'll kind of quickly go through some simple cipher queries 
so that you are able to understand how you can extract insights from your graph database. Now the first question that I have in mind is which social media platform has the most number of users? I want the top 5 social media platforms which is where what I'll do is I'll create a variable called as query and this is the cipher query that I'll require to actually extract the social media platform that has the most number of users and finally I'll kind of call the graph.run function pass in the query store that into a result and print the result okay now I'll explain this particular query in a very simplified manner this particular Neo4j query searches for all nodes in the graph database with the label person that are connected to nodes with the label social media so this is the first thing that I'm doing in line number one it then returns the title property of the social media node and the count of all people who are connected to that social media node so this is what this particular query is doing in the second line the result is then stored in descending order based on the number of users and only the top five social media that has the highest number of users are returned so this is how simple this particular cipher query is it's similar to SQL but the structure is a bit different but at the end of the day given the scale at which you can kind of operate huge databases in Neo4j all of these calculations happen very quickly so I'll quickly run the cell to show you the output so let me quickly run the cell so clearly WhatsApp is a very famous social media platform it's been used it's currently being used by 12 people in the database followed by Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter so all I did was I wrote a cipher query and I had the results with me this was super quick and when you scale it to millions of users as well the results would be super quick much faster than your say RDBMS systems similarly the next thing that I want to find out is which platform has the highest rating so what I'll do is I'll kind of go over the queries so that you are able to understand line by line what every query means so this particular query searches for all nodes in the graph database with the label person that are connected to nodes with the label social media it then returns the title property of the social media node and the average value of the rating property of the relationship between the person and the social media nodes the result is then sorted in the descending order based on the average rating value which means that the social media platforms with the highest average rating will be shown first so when I quickly run this cell you will be able to see the output as well so Instagram basically has the best average rating which is 4.52 followed by YouTube, WhatsApp and so on and so forth this is how simple the queries are as well there is not much complexity to it once you kind of get a hang of how cipher works you can basically create such amazing queries by yourself now what is the total screen time for a user and which social platform has the most screen time so so this is something that is very similar so I won't go line by line through this query because this is a fairly simple and similar query that I've already covered in the previous section so I'll quickly run this and when I now show you the data frame it tells me that Chandler Bing as a user uses Instagram maximum and has a screen time of 150 similarly you have Rose, Bush, Dr. Tarika and so on and so forth so uh, this is a data frame that I've created once you have data in form of a data frame then you can kind of visualize the data using matplotlib or seaborn as well so this is the power of connecting python with neo4j uh, database and you can kind of achieve greater scales now I have a complex query with me find the eldest person and the youngest person with their choice of social media so the person in the data set who is the eldest which platform does he use the person that is the youngest which platform does he or she use so that is the problem statement that I have so here I'll go line by line again so this particular query has two parts I'll first cover this part then I'll go to this part okay if I only look at the first part 
the first part and the first line searches for all nodes in the graph database with the label person that are connected to nodes with the label social media it then sets the name of each person node to eldest person returns the new name the original name the age of the person based on the date of birth property and the title of the social media node the result is then sorted by the age which means the oldest person will be shown first the limit one that you see here this particular line of code ensures that only the person with the highest age will be shown the second part of the query is similar to the first part but rather than having say the eldest person what i'm doing is i'm filtering out the youngest person here there is no descending which simply means i am kind of sorting this entire data in the ascending order so the data would be in ascending here the data would be in descending and what i am doing right now is the union all keyword combines the results of the two parts into a single result set therefore the query returns two rows one for the oldest and one for the youngest and one for the youngest person so i'll quickly show you the output as well so the eldest person is acp pradyuman he is 62 years old and he uses twitter similarly you have a youngest person entry as well something similar is what i've done with male female users for each social media platform basically again if you look at the query again you have a union all you have the first section you have the second section all i'm doing is i'm counting the number of male and female users for every social media platform and i'm printing that result so when i run this this is the overall gender breakdown of every social media account so integrating python with neo4j you're combining the best of both worlds you're using a scalable graph database and you're using the power of python to kind of now use this particular data that you've fetched for generating insights you can now create appealing dashboards using plotly seaborn or matplotlib and later in the forthcoming videos i'll kind of show you how you can create entire machine learning models from scratch using neo4j's graph database and using python connectors so uh, i hope you found this introductory video on neo4j connection with python really informative and i hope you make it a point to subscribe to my channel for future amazing videos on neo4j data science deep learning and gcp based solutions thank you so much for watching the video Thank you.